live. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining the Latina Libertarian. I am here today with my dear friend, Claudia Stauber. Uh, she is a local activist. Um, she's been involved um, here with the work that we've done with the informed consent movement and on a variety of fronts. Uh, most notably, though, she's just an activist for liberty um, against medical mandates for informed consent against lockdowns. Um, so I have a question to ask you. How did you go from being Miss Lamoille County to <laughs> banned on Facebook and banned and censored on our local front porch forum? Because right? you can't even, they took you out. What did you do? They took me out twice. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was like, she was Miss Lamoille County. <laughs> yeah, only miss miss like old Lamoille County. But um yeah, it's it's very strange. We're going through extreme censorship. I mean, we're going through extreme censorship, uh, censorship on all the platforms really. On YouTube, I have two strikes. If I have one more, my channel is gone. And between wow. YouTube, Facebook and Twitter, I have about 6 to 70,000 followers or so. And um, which is not that much in the big scheme of things, but um, you know it factors in. And I think once they once they start penalizing you for speaking the truth, you're just like in the last four months. I was on Facebook for a total of ten days. I come on, I post something. If it's other than kitten videos, I'm blocked again for a month. So <laughs> I've given up. I've given. Oh, here's a kitten video. We have and one right here. Kitten. We should be good to go. This is a kitten video. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, as soon as you speak any truth, and I think it depends on also the larger the following, the easier you get blocked. I see that with other yeah. commentators that are that have many more than me. They were blocked months ago, much right. much earlier than me. So it depends. So now they're going to the to the next tier down, which you know I'm in I'm in that tier where I'm just short of getting everything deleted off of the internet. And as you know, you know, the Biden administration is um, putting in, trying to put in a task force to really censor the media, to really censor social media, to really go after our text messages. So they don't go through anymore when we put in certain links. Um, so it's wow. just, just full on um, internet war. And me most people don't even realize that we're in it, you know, unless you're fighting right. for it. Right freedom people don't know that we're even in it because if you literally just put kitten videos up you have no problems right but we're way past the kitten um, incredible <laughs> i know unless the kid it's like a hidden message um it's incredible though because they're like there is so much going on there are so many people who are speaking out who are asking questions um but obviously, if you're only looking at mainstream media, um, mainstream social media, like the, the channels or the things they want to gear you towards, then, yeah, it's I guess that information or that narrative is going to sound crazy, but it's all over. I mean, they can't they can't stop it. Right. Um, and I think so. Could you mm -hmm, go ahead? What's breaking it finally, what's breaking through to normal people also in a sense is because so many people are getting injured by the vaccine. And you can see that by how many people are not taking the second dose. You know, a lot of people got the wow. first dose, but many people do not get the second dose because they're seeing what happened to their body. They're seeing it in family members. Family members are dying. I mean, I know four people now that have died from uh, the shot. And I think it's going to be so many more by the time this year is over, you know? And so I think, and obviously, that. I mean, even normal people, mainstream people like that I talked to in Germany are like, yeah, I mean, it seems like a lot of people have really bad reaction and I'm going to hold off, you know? So it's, it's starting to break in that way. Um, I'm just putting in now just some images of the protests that have been happening yesterday. 
So I don't know yes. if you can see that. Um, but there were protests. Let me see if I could just make this big. There were protests everywhere. I know there were uh, protests um, in Australia. There was a huge turnout of people in Australia. London, Fran uh, Paris, um, and even here in the U.S. in different cities, there were people coming out specifically against the COVID passports. Right. Um, so in France, they passed it um, so that you really couldn't go to any public venue like a theater, um, a movie theater, a stadium, venues like that where there were a lot of people. And then it seemed as though the it was incremental. So then it seemed as though the next step is um, more, more, you know, direct necessary things. So like going into a supermarket, um, just things that you have to do on your daily life, like going into even like certain jobs, um, certain uh, uh, private employers like would be required to do this. So I don't know, if, I, I, I know in Paris, pardon? No, go, go ahead. No, I was just saying that I know in France, like people have been protesting like throughout this because the lockdowns were so incredible in Europe. Um, I know they were protesting in Germany as well, but the reaction right now to the COVID passports, I think has been almost like a turning point where people are just like enough. Um, and I think part of it has to do with the, um, the failure of the vaccine to do what they claimed it was supposed to do. Um, because now they're saying that you know, there's a discrepancy of whether it's 60% of the people that come into the hospital have already had their vaccinations or it's 40%. In reality, it really doesn't matter what the number is. I mean, it's enough of a percentage that either the vaccine is failing, it's not working the way it's supposed to work. Um, let me disconnect this. Um, and people are just enough, enough is enough. And then on the other hand, a lot of people are being hurt by the vaccine, particularly in the US. So we have the Bayer system, the vaccine, you know, adverse events reporting system, um, which historically about only 1% of people even make it into that system. So if we're looking at about, I think we're all a little over 6,000 deaths in we're the Bayer system. 11, no, we're over 11,000. Oh. So that was me checking a couple of weeks ago. So that number could actually be 10 times higher. So it could be much higher. Yeah, yeah. It, could it, it could, right. We won't know. Right, and the Bayer system is is very difficult to, to maneuver. It is not an easy system. So even people who want to report or doctors who want to report, I mean, if you have a limited amount of time because you're in between patients, you may not get to it and you may forget about it. Or if you're someone who's been affected or a family member, um, it's very difficult. And I mean, I just think they do that because they 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 want to limit how many people could get into it right now. Right, right. No, I think it's um, the vaccine passport is a big one. However, we basically in this country many employers, the big ones, already do the same thing, just they don't call it a vaccine passport. I mean, look at the Houston Methodist Hospital, where right. they have 26,000 employees and 117, I think, nurses wanted to not get the vaccine, and they fired them yeah. all. I mean, they fired them all, you know? And so that's happening all over the place that people are losing their jobs because they're not willing to get the vaccine under the disguise of, well, we need to protect our customers or patients. And, uh, but that is, that whole, the whole COVID story is starting to whittle down. And you can see it in a sense by looking at uh, the PCR test now, they said, uh, the CDC said that uh, by December twenty, uh, by December 31st, they will no longer use it because it can't differentiate between the flu and COVID. And yet we're still using it until then. You know, Bill Gates bought the PCR company. And, wow. and uh, so we're moving into a new thing and we're also moving more into the climate change rhetoric you know we're moving more into that that's that's the next COVID. 
And um, the reason, you know, you can see it is because they're going to create food shortages this winter. I mean, our bread basket last we year already see yeah, had a bad year. And they said that this year needs to be a bumper year in order to make up for it. And this year so far, we are down to 30% of last year down to zero. So a lot so of food areas have no food at all. Some have only 30% of what they had last year. And last year was a bad year. So you're saying bread basket, you're meaning where they're growing the wheat in the U.S. Well, they're growing, they're well, they're growing all the food. I mean, California has enormous right. water shortages the water is gone they literally turned off the water completely to the farmers so the only mm -hmm. farmers that can water their crops are the ones that bring in tankers with water and they're buying that water so and and then the whole west is burning up literally in heat which of course is not uh, real heat it's all geoengineered and they have been doing that for years, if not decades. And there's great footage on the History Channel about geoengineering from decades ago. So not like recently even, it, it already has been happening for a long time. And so they're creating those droughts and to create food shortages. And the biggest farmland owner in the country now is Bill Gates. So isn't that something yeah and so it's easy to create food shortages when you own all the farmland and you just don't put crops out anymore so we are heading for a collision course and especially people that are not prepared that are not aware of those things that aren't paying attention that think that the supermarkets will always be full and the light switch will always go on you know when you live in that paradigm you will have probably a pretty bad awakening very soon. And I've been talking I've, about that for years. You have, um, yeah. you know, and one of the conversations you and I always have is how astonishing it is that so many people are just oblivious in a sense. And even with, you know, so just even with like, with the COVID, with the scamdemic, I call it, just even with like everything that comes out, like very early on, the PCR test was exposed as not being accurate. Even the man who invented the test kept saying that this was not, they were not using it correctly. Um, well, so it, just like Times, all this. The New York Times wrote that it's 90% false positive. The New York Times uh -huh. early on wrote that. So even the mainstream sheep should have known at that point that, wow, okay, so something is really wrong with that test, but no, let's keep using it, no problem. <laughs> we well, have a because, lot the, because then we have politicians who jump on because they realize that people are easily controlled with fear. Yeah. Um, and I think that's one of the things like we always talk, so, talk about. And one of the things that, you know, in trying to relate to people, it's, you know, we have to take control over what we're able to control. Um, if, if you have anywhere that's big enough for a couple of big pots, like grow something, right. um, be aware of like what you're able to do, um, you know, empower yourself somehow with some level of self-sufficiency because it's very real. And if this whole year and a half hasn't been a lesson. I mean, you know, a year and a half ago for several weeks, you'd go to the supermarket and there were entire aisles that were empty. Um, yeah. And some people kind of a light went on for them and they went into a different mode of like, let me be more prepared in this kind of way. And a lot of people were panicked, but once the aisles filled up again, which took a long time, it took months. It wasn't even like it was quick. They just, everyone just kind of got lulled back. And the goalpost keeps, keeps getting pushed back and pushed back. So it's like, it's two weeks to flatten the curve. Then everybody mask up. And we knew from the very beginning that they were gonna get a vaccine and they were gonna push it and they were gonna make it mandatory. And it's just like, here we are a year and a half later. And the things that people, you know, who've been, fighting against mandated medicine and informed consent for years, we were talking about like, if there was something that happened, they're going to take advantage of it. 
Um, and then it's like, here we are. And still people are just in complete denial. And they're like, you guys are crazy. And just trying to marginalize and, 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 and control and, and, but it's just like, why would you rather live in fear than just kind of look at the truth and say, this is BS. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's been, it's been really shocking to me because last year, and you know that too, so many people got chickens, mason jars were sold out, seeds were sold out, everything was going crazy. Right. People were really starting to put in gardens and prepare this year. Oh, everything is back to normal. No problem. I don't have to do anything. I mean, I still see the gardens going up and that the people who started them last year are still growing some food, but it's people are definitely back into their comfort zone in many ways thinking, oh, okay, so we're through the worst. People are getting the vaccine. Everything is fine. And we're going to go back to normal pretty much with a few alterations, but everything is pretty much okay again, you know? And uh, the truth is, it's just really not. <laughs> it's just really not. It I mean, gets worse and worse. And, and and people are like, well, if everyone just did what they were told. And it's just like, when know. was that ever a good thing? Right. It's Right. And it's the people, you know, like, because we live here. So, so many people that we know who years ago, they were part of the, the, the GMO labeling movement. They were right. part of the movement to make sure that we protected our like local organic farmers. Um, you know, they're part of the movement that was like, you know, again, the, the, the big corporate agriculture businesses, these are like, they're all tied into big pharma. Um, right. So a lot of those people that were activists in these other areas, like all of a sudden they just got really quiet. Right. And they're all kind of going along with it. And it's just like, how do you not see the connections? Yeah. Yeah, no, and, and I, I think it, but it's really a nope. time where we also need to look at solutions outside yeah. of the system because no matter how much truth we uncover and how much we say and how much even lawsuits are being filed and even judgments are being made. Like in Portugal, the PCR test was no longer valid, wasn't allowed to be used anymore. In Austria, mm -hmm. a big court, uh, the highest court in Austria ruled that the whole lockdown was bullshit and yet they're marching along just like everybody else nothing is being done even if the highest court rules in basically our favor it means nothing at all so it's just keeps marching along no matter what we do it seems and so i think change will really come from uh what we individually do you know we can't hope for anybody outside of us to make changes for us. It won't be right. the case. And if you're trapped in the system and if you need a job that you go to, you will eventually be forced to either have the shot or you won't be able to make a living anymore. Those will be your choices. You won't be able to send your kids to school anymore. You won't be able to go to a doctor's office anymore. You know, all the basic things, you won't eventually be able to go to a grocery store anymore is what I believe. And so if you are trapped in the system, then those are your only choices and you will have to comply or you will starve, you know? And so we need to now, and we should have 10 years ago, prepared ourselves for a situation like that where we build communities, where we are around like-minded people, where we implement a local economy that is based on maybe our own monetary system, maybe based on barter, maybe based on just exchanging goods and services. And if we have that, they can all go and pound sand because right. we don't need them, you know? And eventually more people will wake up to that reality and come on board. But we need to have a system in place so we can step out of the existing structure because that one is so corrupt to the very core that uh, we cannot we cannot penetrate it with facts. Right. We have tried that for the last year and a half and nothing has happened, just the contrary. They're muzzling our kids. Women are losing their babies at four times yep. the rate that normal wow. women, four times the rate of people, uh, women having miscarriages and it's clearly oxygen deprivation and uh, the high CO2 in the body and of course, all the, the vaccines that are out now, 
you know, and being exposed to that. I mean, people are losing their kids now at eight, nine months carrying the baby, eight, nine months, seven months. We don't hear about miscarriages in the last trimester. We hear about miscarriages in the rare. first yeah. one or two it's or more three rare. Yeah. And now it's like a common place. So something is so wrong and yet people are not willing to look at what is actually wrong. And that's why people like you and I, and there are many of us, they make us yeah. want to believe that there are a few, which is not the right. case. We it's are not incredibly true. many and we are gaining every single day. And so we have, we actually do have the numbers because this country is less than half vaccinated. So we mm. actually have numbers. And the people who aren't vaccinated at this point, they are like, there is no way I'm gonna, you know, unless they don't have food anymore. You can't feed your kids. What are you gonna do? You know? Right. So I think those, we are, we are the majority and we need to unite and we need to really say, well, I'm not playing along. You guys can play this game, but I'm not going to play with you. I'm going right. to play my own, you know? And I've sent countless messages to my lawmakers here in our, in our place and yeah. to, the, you know, governor, health department. I've had conversations. I called them endlessly and to no avail, they keep marching along with their tune, which is completely, completely wrong, completely wrong. And I call them murderers and everything, but it wow. is what it is. And we have to just really create our own economy. Alternative. And yeah. How, yeah. And that is how we're going to survive. And I think that's why things like, even though it seems cliche, but it's true, like things like Bitcoin and other, other currencies like that. And people just kind of trying and even other alternative, like social media sites are such a threat because it's just people trying to find a solution outside, um, trying to find whether it's an alternate type of currency for exchanges, um, an alternate space for communication, for sharing ideas. And it's funny because look how quick during the election, I forgot the name of the social media, um, but they shut it down. They were like, we're not going to allow your, yeah. And it's just like, this is a completely, but they, they went about it because it's like, well, we don't like what you have to say. So we're going to shut it down. And then they label it. Well, it's only conservatives on it. It's only, you know, right wingers on it. It's just like, who cares who's on it? So either we have free speech or we don't. But what I was going to say is that there's a lot of people that are excited about liberty. There's a lot of people who are excited about hearing people talk like what you're saying um, and what you're doing. There's been freedom festivals all summer. Pork Fest was the hugest it's ever been in New Hampshire. And it was all about this type of thing, just people getting together and realizing that we have to create our own system. So just starting in your personal life of where you can be more in independent. Um, there's a freedom fest happening right now in South Dakota. Um, a group of us are working on one here in Vermont for the fall. And I just think the more spaces that we create where people can come together and see that they're not alone is really powerful. You know, New Hampshire uh, is sneaking in medical bills for mandatory vaccinations and manda mandatory medical procedures. Really? New Hampshire is gone. Really? Yeah. Oh, I thought they put in stuff to prevent that. <laughs> nope, 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 not, nope. The back door is wide open, wide oh open. Gosh. A friend of mine, uh, a nurse and, and other medical practitioners who have a blog that is called uniteforTruth.com uh, and it's the number four, uniteforTruth.com. Uh, they just did a blog on that. It's a lot of medical oh professionals. God. They have about a thousand medical professionals now working on the blog. And so, yeah, it's, it's incredible. I mean, New Hampshire is sneaking in stuff through the back door and nobody even notices. Yeah. Because they're passing other things that people are happy about. And I guess they, they do things. And isn't it something like, I mean, New Hampshire is a pretty small state. It, it has a, it has a little bit more people than Vermont. It has a little over a million um no, vermont I, has I, just you know has under a million yeah but it's you know these small states with small um small state houses in a way 
but there's so many uh, lobbyists. I mean, I remember a couple of years ago, we were looking up how many lobbyists were for Vermont. Um, and there was over 100, over a hundred, just for, just for pharmaceuticals, there was over a hundred lobbyists in Vermont. And it's just like, why are there so many for such a small state? But truly it's, you know, they, they, I was talking last week with JT Dodge and he does a lot of work with the climate uh, tax, carbon tax. And he was saying Vermont is really used as kind of like a testing ground for things that they try to initiate in other states. Vermont is a complete testing ground for them. It's perfect because Vermont is incredibly compliant. They want to be nice. They don't want to be the mean right. one. They want to be the nice guy. And it is an absolute testing ground. And Vermonters, I have never seen so many compliant sheep in my entire life like I've seen in Vermont. I mean, all over the world are protests all over the place. I mean, in tiny little places in Thailand, they have protests, literally right. with the horse carriages and their donkeys. And, and in Vermont, people are just like, shoot me up. What do you got? <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable to me. We yeah. were in County Fair today, and there is a vaccine clinic. I saw that. I was there yesterday. Yeah, they I didn't go today. Everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was unbelievable. And, and then, so yesterday, it, it was set up. It was for today, so they were setting it up for today. And I thought yesterday, who the hell wants a vaccine in a county fair? But you, you know, know, it's like they're so decision, and you do it on uh, on the fly where there's where there's animals, you know, that are, you know, there's cows and horses there, you know, for their things that they do. There's people running around on rides. There's kids everywhere. There's fair, you know, fried food. Um, they're doing like uh, the tractor pulls. So there's dust everywhere. I mean, it's almost insane to think like this is a place where you should be making a health decision, but they're just so desperate to get numbers. Um, I wonder how well they did because there was a lot of people there who were clearly not um, progressive liberal Democrat people. There are a lot of, you know, people waving their American flags and a bit more on the conservative side. So I, I was wondering how many, I wonder how many people they're going to get who at this point, but in my opinion, they're targeting young people because that's really who's at the fair. Yeah. The fair is predominantly young kids who are there, you know, they're going on the rides. It's like teenagers and people who are young yeah um but it's pretty insidious the way that they're you know like all of these months they're trying to entice remember free beer free hot dog free ice cream um even money there's some states that were offering a lottery there were states that were offering a free scholarship can you imagine ohio um, was a million dollars a week never heard about who got that money i don't think they ever paid a it week? a week Oh Once a week between all the vaccinated people was a lottery for a million dollars every week. Insane. In and, then money. <laughs> and then it's taxpayer, so money. taxpayer money. And then it's like everyone's and they really had a spike in sign up after they announced that. I of mean, who is that crazy? It is really truly mind boggling to me. Mm -hmm. But you know, the bigger the bigger issue is really that everything we are experiencing right now on the planet is really a reflection of how we are inside. You know, mm. we are incredibly as a population, we have become incredibly selfish, non-community focused. You know, nobody can get enough anymore. There's no such thing as enough. And right. We have become very selfish and egotistical. And this whole situation planetarily is really um, is really a manifestation of how we feel. And when you look at it, Olga, what we have done in other countries, what we have done to Libya, Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, all those countries, what we have done to those people, and if we believe that the people who implement that give one shit about a human life, then we are wrong because they do not give a shit right. about in Syria and they do not give a shit about people in the U S Europe, Germany, anywhere. They right. do not 
care about human life. What they want to do is reduce us to them. We are rats that have overpopulated the planet that they want to keep for themselves. And wow. so, and we have raped, pillaged and murdered so much in other countries. And why would it not come home to roost here right now? You know, right. And so if we don't, if we don't stop what we are doing to other countries and are okay with that, what we have done for the last decades, we have our karma coming to us, you know, it is mm. what that is. Because we have, you know, what you put out, you get back. And everybody understands that in every religion and every everybody understands that, you know, you sow, you, you reap what you sow. Uh, you know, uh, what is the other one? Uh, the golden rule, you know, what you do onto others, you know, all of that. I mean, when you think about that and how we have behaved is incredibly horrific. And now mm -hmm. we are here and it's coming to us and we are in shock because we think that right. the people who are doing it to other people are like, oh, well, they would never do that to us. Of course not, you know? And the, the thing is, it's the government, right? Yeah, right. Our government right. goes and does this to other places. And then it's like, okay, well, now they're turning it against us. Yeah. And the crazy part is, is we have a segment of the population that applauds that. Yay. Yeah. You know, they want, they want to be part of the team. And, and I'm always astonished by people who identify themselves as like progressives and liberals and actually like people who like, even like, people that I've known personally who are, who are, who are nice people. And, you know, maybe like from the Bernie time or from the, like the GMO labeling, um, our herbal community just went kaputs. And um, this came in and all of a sudden it's just like, because it was the, the, the figureheads of the political party that they agreed with, it's like you kind of, everyone is like, okay, we have to go along with this. And I'm and I'm always just like authoritarianism is always wrong, no matter what color brings it. I don't right. care if it's red, I don't care if it's green, I don't care if it's blue. It's always wrong. Yeah. Um, but again, like I think one of the things I'd love about you is, you know, yes, we have these conversations, but you're an incredibly positive person and you always come from a place with compassion. And I think that is something that um, those of us who are, you know, working for liberty and freedom, I think that's something that, you know, we see that because even though we see people who are, you know, they want to, the people who want to have a, um, the hotline to report the businesses that aren't checking, remember all of that, um, um, at the same time, kind of look at them and just like, I understand it's, you're operating from a place of so much fear. Um, and just trying to have conversations that you get to a point where you realize people can no longer listen to logic. Even people that, you know, they can't hear it because they're just blinded yeah. um, with the fear and the desire, I guess. Yeah. I to know be compliant. Fear, you know, I know fear. I didn't know fear until just um, a few years ago, a couple of years ago when I had basically a stalker and I learned what fear was. I was really afraid um, all the time. And for the first time in my life, I had a gun with me all the time. I wouldn't leave my house without a gun. I went grocery shopping with my gun. I was always, I was in, I was living in fear. And it lasted only a few weeks. And then I was thinking, I can't live like that. If I die, I die. If I live, I live, you know, but I can't live this way. And so it started subsiding, but it sometimes peaks up when I see a certain car or when I, you know, I'm like, oh. And um, so I just, uh, but we can't live that way. You know, we right. can't live in a paradigm of where everybody could be our enemy. You know, when we start living that way, we start living a very sad life. And you we know? lose our humanity. We lose our humanity completely. Yeah, we lose our humanity completely, and and we need to regain our com uh, our compassion and our our humanity because when we don't, this is what happens. This happens because we've lost our humanity, 
And people have been brainwashed to believe they did all this to save grandma, but sending right. their kids to the slaughter. You know, it doesn't even make sense when you think it out because I don't know a single grandmother that would say, yeah, I mean, destroy everybody's life just so I can live a few more months. Uh, right. I don't know anybody who would think that in the right mind, you know? And so I think we need to really regain our humanity and, and also look at other countries and how we conduct our everyday life and are we okay with going to war with countries that the wars that we have raged in other countries are based on a lie 9 11 mm -hmm. became very clearly right away that it was a lie and so based on that lie we have killed millions of people in the middle right. east and based on the COVID lie on the PCR test lie and asymptomatic spread, which is another lie, even according to our God Fauci, um, <laughs> we have based all this now on a lie. And so many people are dying because of that. And they are dying not just in the Middle East this time, they're dying all over the world. And we will see a massive onslaught of, of people dying this winter, I believe. Mm -hmm. I could and we're but, not even talking about the isolation, people who died from isolation, people who yes. died from suicide. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, overdoses were the highest ever this year in Vermont. Um, yes. Suicide were the highest ever this year and among younger and younger people. But this right. is throughout the country, right? Not just here. Throughout the country um, and preventable. Also. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and so honestly, and, and though all of those numbers outnumber the COVID deaths, but like no one's wants to talk about that. The numbers are just in from England, uh, uh, overall dying in England in uh, 2020 was not even a lick higher than any other year since the last 10 years. Right, right in average numbers. Nobody, no excess dying at all. Mm -hmm. And I think we should have the numbers in uh, the US now as well. I haven't even looked, but they don't come out till June usually. But we should have the overall death now for 2020, the official number uh, in the US also. I actually have to look that up. Then I get blocked again after I put that on Facebook. <laughs> but you yeah, last a second. There, there are lots of people that are fed up. There are lots of people that want their lives back. There are lots of people that are uh, joining us. And I think that's really the important part. I think we have to be very careful uh, about joining organizations. I know some of them have plants in them. And mm -hmm. of course, when there is a good organization, somebody will eventually infiltrate. It's always been like that. Um, so we have to just be mindful of that, I think, generally when we join groups. But uh, be that as it may, I mean, we need to organize in some way but I still believe that personal responsibility and personal ways to step out of the system are paramount to anything else that we can do. 100%. Yeah. And you've been talking about that for before even this happened. Yeah. You've been talking about that for a long time. And you've helped a lot of people try Maybe. to get to that place. You have. <laughs> And I think it's also, I mean, it was clear that a pandemic was coming. Just with the laws that Trump was passing, it was getting really clear that a pandemic was coming, that they were working on one. And so actually I made a video in 2017 and I made one in 2019 in September before they had their event 201. It mm -hmm. was like early September, I made a video and I was screaming at the camera saying, the next pandemic is just around the corner. Can't you all see it? You know? And so, and then it didn't take much longer. And here we are, you know, because um, it doesn't matter who the front puppet is, whether it's Biden or Trump or, or Obama, right. or whatever. they all have right. the same laws. They all are doing what they're told. I mean, Trump was saying he will roll out the military to get everybody vaccinated, you know? Right. Um, How scary. I mean, what the hell? And then he was saying, get everybody vaccinated. 
I, and then he officially supposedly got the vaccine and Ivanka got the vaccine and whatever. I mean, we don't have anybody that is in politics that is on our side. And the sooner we realize that, the sooner we can make changes and actually take charge of our own life. Right. Oh, can you turn on? Thanks. Yeah, to stop being dependent on this idea of um, of your favorite figureheads, whether it's Bernie or or Trump or whoever, it's just like it's all this externalization of just you put all your eggs like that this person or this political party is going to solve your problems, and at the end of the day, they all agree. When it comes to the stuff that really hurts us, they're all in agreement. They're all in agreement with these huge military budgets. They're all in agreement with these huge budgets of like, you know, that, that really hurting us at the end of the day, because whether we want to see it or not, we're got we pay for it out of our taxes or out of, out of whatever, out of, so all of this stuff, it's just a way to kind of try to get people on board and get us distracted. But um, it's just so important to step back. And one of the things you said earlier, I think is really quintessential in all this is find your community um, even if it's one other person, but there, there are a lot of us. I went to this event earlier today in Vermont, in Lindenville, Vermont. It was, um, what was it called? The health freedom and unity, um, event. And it was in Lindenville, Vermont, and there were speakers there, but I was just really pleasantly surprised at how many people were out there. And it was just kind of like a very informal People were talking, but it was like a picnic and they had, you know, uh, lemonade and they had ice cream for kids. And, but it was just people who were there who wanted to take back their freedom. Um, and people who, you know, want to get to know who are the other people that think the same way. Because one, Vermont is an incredibly rural state outside of, you know, fake Vermont, which is Burlington. We're incredibly rural. So it's easy to feel isolated. Um, but there's a lot of people who think the same way and who are kind of on the same page. And I do think that it's important for us to get together once in a while, at least to, to see people face to face and to make those connections. Um, you know, there's groups of us that are conscious, you know, we're homeschooling our kids and we're going to consciously be making sure that we build a community for our kids as they grow. They have, you know, that community um, and a lot more people just, being proactive about what they can do to be more self-sufficient and sustainable um, and, you know, different kinds of groups and conversations that are happening around that. Yeah. And I'm, uh, I'm interviewing a guy on tomorrow again, and I won't put it up till Tuesday, but uh, he speaks about PMAs, private membership associations. Yes. And, and we need to really, the next uh, uh, the next interview with him will be about homeschooling because people nice. think that homeschooling, they are safe from the government, but they aren't. They need to consciously really step out and create their own private homeschool membership associations in order to be really safe from that. And I think people mm. need to really start paying more attention to that. You know, the DNC and the GOP are private membership associations. Wow. Yeah. The Clinton Foundation, private membership association. You know, I mean, they know how to step out of the system. They know how to step outside state laws. And we don't. And we need to gain that right. knowledge and do that. Because otherwise, they will always have a hold on your kids if you don't like it, you know. I mean, if they don't right. like Right. I mean, here in Vermont, you, it, even though they don't make it so hard yet, you just kind of send in a form saying that you're homeschooling. And there's, I think there's only three states in the country where homeschooling is part of their, the state constitution as a right of parents. And so in those states, you don't even, you don't have to, to let the state know because the assumption is that you're homeschooling. The exception is if your kid shows up to public school or private school, then they're enrolled. Otherwise, they're just assuming that you're homeschooling because it's considered a basic right. It's in their constitution, um, which seems pretty logical. It should be like that. It should be the other way around. Um, but that's really interesting. And so is the PMA, is that a legal, is that a legal term? Is that, okay. Yes. And you so where are where are you communicating with people right now because you're not on Facebook. I know you're on Twitter. 
I'm on Twitter. I'm on BitChute. I still have my YouTube channel. I have to be careful what I upload there. I uploaded mm -hmm. uh, the last interview with uh, David Edwards, and I haven't gotten another strike, so I assume so far so good. But we don't talk about COVID, so that's a plus. We don't even mention that really. So that's that's what right now right. is the delete button. And so right. I could upload that. I just can't share it on Facebook. But there are many other platforms, and so many people have moved on uh, BitChute, on Odyssey. I mean, I have about half uh, half as many views now on BitChute that I have on YouTube. So people are going over there. Cool. If they actually want information, you just can't usually find it on YouTube anymore anyway. You know, it's all right. gone. Anything that had any validity is gone. So it's just the, so many, many people are going to other platforms and people like James Corbett, who I love and follow or uh, Last American Vagabond. I mean, they have now more viewers on the other channels than they had on YouTube. So people are going in droves. You know, they have now hundreds of thousands of views and it's it's gravitating there and people so are getting people more want to, you know they're like oh yeah, yeah. You shut here we'll just all go over there you know no problem right it's not that difficult to step outside once you realize there's all these other i mean there's even alternative like outside of like facebook messenger there's all types of other um apps and things that you can use that are completely outside of that to communicate with people and they work the same exact way um, if people want to find you on Twitter or BitChute or YouTube or Odyssey, what is your handle or how do they find you? It's uh, easiest to just look for Cabin Talk. I call my channel okay. Cabin Talk. And um, I've always made it, well, I used to, now I just scream at the camera more, but um, I used to always make it a compilation of homesteading and truth because I think the two go That's together. how I found you. Yeah, yeah, the two go together. I mean, if you don't know how to prepare your own food and grow your own food and step out of the system, then uh, you can't step out of the system. <laughs> it's simple right. as that, you know? Once you know how to supply for yourself your basic needs, which I always say is water, food, and heat, or cold, depending on where you live, you know, how to stay warm or stay cold. Oh, see, and you started and talking some real Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, oh, I lost you for a second, but you got back. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, so I, I said that when people, you know, I always say they gave up basic needs for 23 different lattes because, uh, uh, you know, right. you can, oh, I want this. I want a little mocha with a little something, whatever. I mean, it drives me crazy. But, um, you know, they don't know where their water can come from if it gets turned off or their food or their heat. And if you don't have those basic needs filled, then you are screwed. So those are three things that everybody should look in their life and say, do I have water? Do I have food? And do I have heat if the power goes out? And I think the power eventually mm -hmm. will go out very soon and not come on for a long time. Because um, Klaus Schwab from the World Economic Forum is already talking about it. You know, that the next virus will be a cyber virus and it will be many many times and with COVID. and we had a brief uh we had a brief experience with that recently with um i think they said that they got hacked at the gas pipeline uh, right one of down south and yeah. then the other one was um a meat uh yeah meat some packing. type of meat factory right but a big one and that's supposedly that which did like you know you would see that the price has increased incredibly so if you're not independent with your food to some degree you're really going to suffer um in a big picture and i mean there's ways to become more independent um in that way i mean just you know yeah. that's a whole other conversation but there are ways to do that and there's a ton of information that people can access um, on different platforms of just like how to start to be a little bit more self-sufficient. Oh it's so important. Yeah, there's so many wonderful channels online to learn really how to homestead, how to grow your own food, how to start a garden, how to improve your soil. You don't grow food, you grow soil. You always grow soil. 
that's the number one lesson that I would like to tell everybody in the world. Yep. Don't grow, grow soil and the soil will automatically grow everything you could possibly want. But if you don't have good soil, you can never grow food. I mean, I moved here and I was living in a sandbox. My property is such good sand, you could literally sell it as sand. And so there were no nutrients in my ground. And I trucked in, I don't know how many mega truckloads of organic matter, anything from wood chips to manure to leaves. I mean, anything, anything I could get my hands on, I would take. And now I have maybe a foot more than it was when I moved here. And it's nice. great soil and I can stick any seed in there and it will grow like a weed, you know? So yeah. people need to learn to grow soil. Soil is life and soil holds moisture. Good soil. You don't ever, I never water the garden. I don't ever have to water my garden. It is like a sponge. It holds all the water. Wow, so that's I great. Learn about um, permaculture and just how to grow food, they will realize that, oh, we have it all backwards. Never till your garden. You know, maybe when you start a new bed just to break up the basic soil, but never till otherwise. Do not till you destroy all life in your soil. So anyway, that's my rant on soil because I love soil so much. <laughs> When you start and I did the well just to talk on that a second because um um you told me about the car the cardboard method remember and I did it and I mean my garden looks like a jungle nice like it works so you know there's so you know and and one of the things that I tell people is like you can grow a lot in a five gallon bucket. Like you don't need to own tons of land. I mean, I used to live in New York city and we used to grow like tomatoes and herbs and things. And that's very empowering. Like if you start, because you, you begin a relationship with what you have and with your food and you really appreciate like what you're able to produce on a small scale. Yeah. Um, and if, and right. people, people take that concept and they expand it even in a small space and they be, they can be incredibly productive. Yeah. This company, uh, this this uh, family in California, and there are great videos, and I can't think of the name of it right now. But anyway, they have uh, an eighth of an acre. So just an eighth of an acre, which is a really small space. And they grow 6,000 pounds of food there every year. 6,000 pounds of food. They supply farmers markets, they supply restaurants, they eat all their own food. Um, and it's an eighth of an acre. You know, it's like the size of your house, the size of my house, you know, like twice. And that's yeah. it. And they grow yeah. so much food there. But uh, we have we have to get regain the skills to grow food. I mean, granted they're in California. Right and they can grow year round, but we could grow 3000 pounds of food. And there's no way we'd, we would eat 3000 pounds of food in, in 12 months, even right. though we only have a six month growing season, you know? So it's all possible. We just need to really want to. And if you really can't grow food and if you don't want to have a container garden in your apartment, then get to know your farmers, get to know organic farmers in your area, build relationships. Right get to know them. They need to get to know you. So they will supply you with food when you need it. And that's really important. Support them now. So they will support you in the long run. So they'll still be around. So they'll still be around. That's the other thing. Yeah. It's a, yeah. It's a big problem. Um, even in, you know, like in our area, uh, there's so much pressure with so much regulation that even small farmers have a hard time. I mean, they're even, you know, that's one of the things with the whole, you know, scamdemic is our, um, the, the legislatures were still meeting in Zoom and they didn't have to have any public input. Right. So they were able to do all these things. One of the things that I heard that was passed um is that because and only because a couple of friends of mine were you know they were buying like a little bit of land for a camp they were being told that they have to put in a septic system um and that's a new law and that everywhere has to have septic and i was like 
Well, that's insane because so many people have compost toilets. So many people have outhouses. Some, a lot of people, not a lot, but there's people here that they live with. They don't have power and they don't have running water and they live more primitively and, and they have ways that are very eco-friendly to handle this. And I'm like, how is it that this is possible? But it's just, you know, one of ways that for someone who doesn't live like that, you think, well, that's silly, but it's just a crazy, it's an imposition on someone to think, um, you know, that they, they can get, how much is it to put a septic? It could be anywhere between 10 to $30,000. It depends on what's going on. Um, that's truly a burden. And that's not even an ecologically sound um, right. uh, solution actually <laughs> i mean that has its own ecological issues but it's just to show like there's such a disconnect between what happens in the state house and if you're right. not at least aware like something that could really impact you yeah so on yeah. some level it, it's like you have to be mindful and aware of like what is happening because there are those that you know they want to impose a certain view of like everyone has to, can you imagine everyone has to live a suburban lifestyle in like a rural mountain in vermont it just doesn't work it doesn't right. work for everyone well look at look at uh, germany i mean they have lost all their rights and we are marching fast with the whole climate change rhetoric we are marching fast in the same direction you can have a well in your on your property in germany but you're not allowed to use it for your water you're not allowed to use it. You have yeah. to be public water. You can have a wood stove, but it is getting checked by an official every few months to make sure your wood has the right kind of dryness. You know, I mean, all, things, all those regulations that they already have in place, you have to be hooked up to the public sewer system. You can no longer have your own septic. You know, and all those things have changed in the last 10 to 20 years. And we are heading in the same direction, especially with their CO2 bill that they uh, did not too long ago, you know? Wow. Yeah. And so it's, it's insanity what is coming our way. It is not ecological. It's not good for the planet. It's just the contrary. Because when you look at a composting toilet and you use it in your garden, and it is it doesn't get any better than that. I mean, you build soil and your waste is being used in a way that is great for the environment, not just good, right. but great. You know, and the opposite is that we have sludge pits all over the country where the sewage runs into and nobody knows what to do with it. Well, right here, Lake Champlain, how many times does it get shut down? Because yeah. there's, you know, in, in, yeah. Well, not only that, but they actually have waste that get make, that gets into the lake when it rains too much, and then the runoff from the sewage system, um, because I guess there's overpopulated there. I, I, I don't know. They keep building up and up and up, and then that infrastructure just is completely inadequate. Um, and that's a huge problem for you know the Green Mountain State, the state that wants to kind of be on the forefront. But it's just like there's basic things that are happening here. And government is just, that's just really the point. Government is not the one that is here to solve everyone's problems. We have to be creative. Um, and the people have to come up with yeah. solutions for themselves. Yeah, and we have to realize that our government is not anymore here to help us. It's not off the people and for the people and by the people anymore. It's right. off the corporations, for the corporations, and by the corporations at this point. And unless yeah. we change that, we don't have a government. We have owners. Right. You know. Oh my gosh. Well, on that note, let's on that note, grow a garden, grow note. some food, find some good right. people around you and unite with them. Exactly. Because there's definitely a lot of us out here and um it is important to find each other and, and we are finding each other. Um, today went out every day, every day that I go out, every time I have interactions outside, I find people who are like-minded and who are, who are for Liberty. They just don't get to always see and hear other people. So that's why I like, thank you for coming on my little channel with me. Cause I just oh, feel like it's so I important for there. There's it's so important for just more of us to be out here having yeah. these conversations because people yes, find it millions of people that have channels exactly on because they're gonna exactly. shut down the bigger ones and we need 
we need for every big one they shut down we should have a million smaller ones right on, on all the different right on all the different venues that exist yes yes <laughs> oh but thank you so all right much. everyone thank you so um you can find claudia at cabin talk on facebook when she's not banned for being a naughty girl Twitter and BitChute, YouTube and Odyssey. Is there any other ones? No, that's it. That's enough. Of okay, that. that's enough for now. But oh, oh, if we have to... sometimes, oh, and... <laughs> okay. But I mean, if you have to move, it's going to be cabin talk most likely. Yeah, all of it. Right. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for the people who are watching us on Facebook and commenting. We appreciate it. And I will be back next week. And I love you, Claudia. Thank you so much. I love you too. Thanks, love. Bye-bye. Okay.